Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. Uh, welcome back to another video on the force method. This one is going to be a trickier problem with um, two degrees of indeterminacy rather than one. So this question is um, a little bit harder than the last one. I'm, I'm going to try and uh, explain it to you as, as best as I can. So let's go ahead and let's get started, all right? So we um, the question is determine the reactions using the method of consistent deformations. So we're going to be given a beam here. Okay, it's a continuous beam. We have a two kip per feet load uh, distributed across the whole thing. And as always, first, uh, first step is to count the reactions. So we have pin, so that's two, three, four, five reactions. Okay, and we have three equations of equilibrium, all, as always, with a beam. Okay, so this is 5 minus 3, so it is second degree indeterminate. Okay, so uh, second degree indeterminate. So before when we did a first degree indeterminate problem, you just remove one support, come up with another equation, but now we're going to need two extra equations. So what that means is we're going to have to remove two redundant supports, and we're going to have to come up with two separate equations. So let's go ahead and let's start, all right? So how are we going to break it up? So the first step is the same as the other force method questions, okay? So the other force method question, uh, we would uh, remove the redundant forces and just keep the real loadings, and that would be our first type of question, okay? So I'm going to split, show you how to split up the beam, and then I'm going to show you how from the split up to get the equations that you need to solve. And I'll show you the equations for the deflection that I used, but I'm not going to do them, so this uh, video is a little bit shorter. You can do those on your own. So um, right away, we're going to know that we're going to want to remove B and C. Okay, these internal uh, these internal supports in the middle here, and that's just going to leave us with a simply supported beam. So that'll be nice and simple to calculate deflection with. So let's go ahead and do that. So B and C are redundant, and we're going to rewrite our beam like this with the loading, but without B and C. So this is our distributed load. 2 kip per feet. Very good. All right. And we can uh, we can actually say that this is equal to, okay? So this is equal to, okay? This plus this plus this, okay? Just so you kind of know what's going on here. So this is the first stage. We're going to break it up. We're going to remove B and C, okay? And the beam is going to deflect like this, right? So I always like to draw the elastic curve because it helps me understand what's going on. Okay, so this is A and this is D, okay? This is B, sorry, this is C and this is B, okay? And now at B and C we have two deflections, okay? Because the supports have been removed and we're going to label these delta B O, okay? And delta C O, all right? And that is the first step. So these we're gonna have to calculate. Okay, and then we have a second part of the beam, all right, and that is where we replace one of the supports with a redundant force. So we'll start with support B. So we rewrite the beam, and we are going to include our one kip. Okay, so we have a one kip redundant force acting upwards at point B. And that is going to cause the elastic curve to take on this shape here. Okay, and we're going to label this deflection here as small FBB. Okay, so FBB means the the deflection of the uh, I guess the virtual system or the unit system um, with respect to the load at B. Okay, and this is also has a deflection here at C, which we're going to need, and that's called FCB. Okay, so the deflection at C with the respect to the system where the unit load is B. Okay, it's nice and simple, and you'll see why we're doing this in just a second, so hang tight. Finally, we have the um, the final uh, unit load, which we're going to apply at point C. Okay, so that's again one kit, and we're going to have a deflection that looks something like this now. Okay, and we have, we're going to label this FCC. So the the deflection at C with respect to the unit load at C label this and we have FCB sorry and we have FBC here okay so the deflection at B with respect to the unit load at C perfect so this plus this plus this okay is equal to what well that's a good question so 
Um, I'm not going to prove this to you. If you want to under go into the proof, that's fine. Uh, you know, there's lots of stuff in your textbook, but as we always do on this channel, this this is just dedicated to solving problems. So I'm just going to show you how to do the steps in a problem like this, okay? So what this is, okay, we're going to have to multiply this by by, okay? And a good way to remember that is the wherever the point load is located when you take out the load. So for you take off the load and then you apply your unit load, okay? The where the unit load is applied, you need to multiply that by by, okay? So see the unit load is applied here, we're going to multiply that by cy. And we're going to arrive at our two equilibrium equations and it's pretty simple. So we're just going to start here, okay? So we we can say that delta bo, okay? So we'll start at the top here, delta bo plus Okay, FBB times BY plus FBC times CY equals zero. Okay, so that is uh, one of the equilibrium equations. Let's do the next one. Now you can see how it helps to kind of write it out in different stages like this, okay? Because we can just go, you know, delta CO plus FCB times BY plus FCC times CY equals zero. And that's exactly what I'm going to write here. Okay, if you want more kind of in-depth uh, explanation on this, I totally understand. I'm trying to keep this video short and I'm trying to show you the steps to solve the problem. If you want to know how this is derived or anything like that, your textbook is a perfect uh, resource for that. Okay, so now that we have these, what do we need to do? Well, the rest of the question is really, really straightforward, okay? The next step in this question is to solve for the deflections, okay? So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find uh, all the unknowns in these equations here, okay? And what we're, we're, we can't find out, um, we can solve for the deflections, so the deflections I'll underline, okay? These are all the deflections that we need to solve for, and we're going to do that using our deflection table. So I'll just go ahead and put the deflection table on the screen. And um, if you want to pause the video and use this deflection table, um, I'm just going to write the results for you. I don't think you want me to uh, plug in numbers into deflection tables, and it's very kind of messy and tricky to show you that. So I'm going to avoid that step, but I am going to write the deflections for you, and if you want to try and find them on your own and see if you get the same answer. Okay, so I'm just going to write these here for you real quick, okay? So we have delta BO, okay, is equal actually to delta CO, okay? And that's equal to negative because uh, the deflection's downwards. Okay, that's the one that was sloping down. 333.3 three, three, uh, kip feet squared over EI. Okay, we'll just leave EI in there for now. Okay, FBB is equal to FCC. Okay, and that is due to Maxwell's law of uh, reciprocal deflections. So we have FBB equals FCC, okay, because those are equal here, FBB and FCC, these are equal and these are equal. All right, and that is equal to 3,555.556 feet cubed over, feet cubed over EI. And FCB, okay, is equal to FBC, and that is equal to 3,111.11 feet cubed over EI. Now, uh, the rest of this question is honestly very simple. Um, all, all that is left to do here, okay, is just to plug in numbers into the formula that I had before. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it for you. So we had um, delta B O. Okay. If we uh, go ahead and we start plugging stuff in, you're going to see right away that um, each term has EI and these are all going to cancel. Okay, so we're just going to be left with. All right, and what we have here is we have a system of two equations. Sorry about the mess there, guys. That, I hope you can read that. And we have a system of two equations there that we can just go ahead and solve. All right, and if we solve for these two equations, okay, you're going to get by is equal to, just plug those into your calculators, you know, uh, simple stuff. By is equal to cy, actually, because it's a symmetric beam. That makes sense. Is 44 kit up. And from there, we can go ahead and just take the sum of forces, right? We have 2 times 60. That's going to be the total force acting downwards. Very good. And we have uh, B and C, Y are both 44. Okay, so that's going to be minus 88. That's 32 up divided by 2. 
and that's going to be 16. So that means that AY and DY are both 16. All right, and that's the problem. So uh, I know I kind of rushed a little bit through some of the spots there. I didn't show you the deflection formulas that I used. If you guys are interested in uh, seeing what formulas I use, post down below. If not, if you think that, you know, this is uh, enough and that's good, you know, practice for you, then then let me know as well, okay? Because if you want to see me do these calculations, I can do them, but I skipped them because I figured you guys don't want to see it. You just want to see the steps to the problem. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Much appreciated. Uh, that was how to solve a force method question. A second indeterminacy and uh, as always like and subscribe